Hello. Hi, is this Jerry? It is, yes. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is an actor and a writer and someone that tons of baby boomers everywhere feared as the formidable Reverend Trask. <laughs> We're very excited to welcome the one and only Mr. Jerry Lacey to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Thank you. You know, Jerry, I was surprised. This is Terry. I'm one of your biggest fans. <laughs> I was one that grew up watching Dark Shadows, I was like nine years old, and now I'm 65, uh -huh. and I couldn't right. believe when Tiffany told me that here you are, you're doing well, 85, I can believe that, but you were actually right. on a treadmill when <laughs> Tiffany called you. Oh, yes, I get on the treadmill every day. Wow. Here I am 20 years, I'm, I'm 20 years younger than you, and I can't even get off the couch, and you're doing a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I lived in New York City for like... I don't know, 15, 16 years yeah. in a five-flight walk-up apartment, mm. which keeps you in good shape. And right. then I walked everywhere I went, and I tried to be the fastest walker on the street. <laughs> so well, then when we moved out here, I got a treadmill, and I've kept up with it. Wow. Good keeps you me. young. Good for you. Good for you. I was so surprised when we were doing research on you. I didn't know that you've been married forever and have children with the actress Julia Duffy. Correct. Wow. Lucky man. <laughs> she, she's, she's a very nice and a very beautiful lady. Yes. Uh, let me ask you, because we just recently uh, heard of, of the passing of uh, Peter Scolari uh, from Newhart, and I, I would assume that you, you knew him not only because of your wife, but because you also wrote for Newhart. Yes, of course, and we were very sad about this. Yeah. It, uh, it was pretty sudden, um, and at such a young age, too. It was, it's very sad. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, I wanted to start out by kind of asking you uh, how you got started in the business. Uh, you started, I believe, uh, doing theater, and I had read a story about your very first role that you were cast in that I understand you didn't end up performing in it, and it, it got, you got replaced by another actor, right? Mm. Well, you're going way, way back now. I'm not sure. I, <laughs> I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Um, well, replaced by actor. Yeah, I had read that uh, you had actually uh, been cast in a, uh, a a performance, a play, and it, and you were that was your very first official role that you were taking on, and you ended up not performing and were replaced by John Philip Law. Oh no! Oh no! That was that was um, God. That was that was a you know very um, non-union <laughs> production. <laughs> it was just one of those little Hollywood theaters, and uh, no, I I did perform in it. Mm. Uh, I performed, I think, the first week or so, and then I was cast in. A, I was still in college then, and so I was cast in a play in at school and so I had to leave and uh, yes I was replaced by John Philip Law in that part yes wow but so, I did play it I did play it for a week and I made my first dollar there and I had read is this true do you still have that first dollar I do indeed it's in my scrapbook <laughs> <laughs> I love people that keep momentals like that we've met actors they don't have anything do, do you have like mo movie posters and stuff of yours or I have a few but uh, not many, not many posters. I have one from, I have several from Play It Against Them, of yeah. course, right. but that's uh, that's about it. And, and a fun other piece of trivia, I had read, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I had read in an interview that you had said that the reason you first started taking theater classes was because you wanted to pick up girls? Well, not exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, a friend of mine was in the theater arts department, and... Uh, uh, he suggested that I take a, a class over there because that's where all the prettiest girls in school were. <laughs> so, uh, well, why not? Well, you don't have to worry about that, Jerry. You wound up with my like the most beautiful lady ever. I mean, wow! <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. I'm very, I'm very pleased about that. <laughs> now, Dark Shadows, of course, is known as, as this huge soap opera you did. But I was surprised to find out that you had been doing soap operas for years before Dark Shadows. No. Dark Shadows was the first one. Ah, my notes are wrong. Okay, very good. Very good. 
When well, they uh, turned around, I wanted to ask you because Dark Shadows, uh, well, you started out kind of normal because you started out as a Collins lawyer and had a little romance yeah. with Carolyn, and that was all fine. But then when Dan Curtis came to you and told you you were going to be Trask, and I love the way they had you made up because you looked like you came out of a Charles Dickens book or something. <laughs> with the, you, you had the, the greatest set of sideburns outside of Quentin <laughs> Collins. <laughs> Now here you are. You're you're a good looking guy, okay, and then you kind of were, I don't know during Dark Shadows maybe not, but you talked about liking to be liked by the chicks and everything. When they told you you was going to play this evil religious zealot that probably women would spit on if you were like in a grocery store, what did you think about taking on the role of Reverend Trask? I was thrilled because I would never have ordinarily been cast in that part. Yeah. But because we were all like a little rep company there, mm -hmm. we all played, you know, different parts back in the past. And it was a wonderful opportunity for me. Yeah. And as, as it worked out, it worked out quite well. Well, I had made the comment, and, and I truly believe this. I mean, I like Roy Thinnis. You'll know what I'm getting at in a minute. I had said mm -hmm. that I was glad that no one else ever played the part of Trask. And then a listener reminded me that Roy Thinnis did in the Ben Cross revival uh, of which I like Roy Thinnis, but I don't think anybody should have ever played Trask. What did you think of Roy Thinnis as Trask? Did you see the Ben Cross Dark Shadows? I did not. Well, that way you well, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of people that would probably tell you that was a good choice. <laughs> you know, you, you're probably telling me the truth, but if I was an actor, I would give that answer because that way you don't get in trouble. <laughs> so. No, um I think generally the Dark Shadows original Dark Shadows cast was was not pleased with that production, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. and and even less pleased with the Johnny Depp's uh, movie version. Right? D did you see the Johnny Depp movie? Yes, I did. And, I, and thankfully, there was no Trask in there. Yes. <laughs> yes. So there is nobody that can play Trask but Trask. Where did Trask come from? Because I know a lot of method actors. Uh, and I assume you are, tries to pull it up from something. Did you have a religious upbringing? Did you have somebody in your life that was like Trask? Was your father all strict and everything? Or, or <laughs> where did that come from? Where do you pull that from? No, no, I, I, I don't know. I strictly made it up from, from whatever little bits of information I could garner from the script. Yeah. Right. Uh, he was a, a zealot and a, a self-made, uh, self-ordained priest. And um, he was um, really down on witches. Yeah. Right, right. Now, I thought that it was kind of uh, fun and interesting, and you can tell me how you felt about it. I mean, obviously, in in Trask's, uh, in the original Trask in, in 1795, you had this great these great scenes where you were going up against Laura Parker as Angelique. But I thought it was really interesting when they when they brought a different lineage, a different version of Trask back in the 1800 era, um, and he was not. I mean, he was definitely kind of one of these people to where they say they're one thing, and they're totally another. How did you feel about playing that iteration of Trask? Because I mean, he was trying to kill his wife, even. I mean, he the, was the, very crooked. The, the, second, the second Reverend Trask was a lot hornier, too. <laughs> he, he, he was loving on yeah. Joan Bennett, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, that was Gregory, and he was, uh, a, um, well, I guess a great-grandson of the original Reverend Trask, yeah. but mm -hmm. he was uh, duplicitous. He was a schemer. He wasn't... Um, uh, driven by his, uh, his, his, you know, his inner goals, like Reverend Trask was. Right. He was just a plain crook. He was right. a plain crook, and he worked himself into um, being the head of Collinwood. For yeah, a while. how yeah. about that? Just like a lot of your uh, religious figures out there that winds up with an empire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I've got to ask you, you know, as the lawyer character, I believe his name was Tony, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, uh, had some great romantic scenes with Nancy Barrett and then I was surprised to see your other incarnation of Trask Gregory, uh, Gregory uh, wound up being married to the head of the house uh, Joan Bennett I, I mean so who's who's a better kisser <laughs> actually uh, I don't believe that Joan and I have had a love scene um, 
Actually, uh, Clarice Blackburn uh, was head of uh, Collinwood there yeah. for uh-huh. part of that reign of right. uh, Gregory Trask. Yeah. Well, I, I love Clarice Blackburn. I mean, what was she like to work with? She seemed to be very down to earth. I know she got, had to wear a god awful wig. She said it was like a wig that belonged to her mother or something. But <laughs> but she she was great. How was it like to yeah. uh, work with her? Oh, I loved I loved Clarice. I worked with her a, a, a lot uh, longer actually. After I left um, um, Dark Shadows, I was on um, um, Love of Life, yes. and she was. One of the writers. Oh, oh, I didn't know she wrote. That's incredible. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. So as we as we go through this, uh, and I'm getting questions from the audience, I'll kind of field these in here. Um, uh, one of the questions that we got was from our listener Bob Morrison, and obviously, you know, he everybody knows you for Trask, but he wanted to know what is the f- your most favorite role that you've ever played as an actor. Was it within Dark Shadows, or was it in a stage production, or another film or TV show? Gee, you know, favorite questions are always hard for me to answer because they're they're so different. Um, I it, that's I always have trouble with a favorite question. Um, I can't really say. I mean, there were lovely, wonderful parts I played in on stage, and uh, I guess one of the first things that comes to my mind is Harvey. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, you got to do that with your wife, right? Uh, she directed it. Wow. Yes. That had and to be uncomfortable. Uh, I hope you guys weren't having an argument at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <clears throat> she was a wonderful director and, and a great help to me in the part. Wow. wow. That's incredible. And, and I thought she did a masterful job with the, with the rest of the cast as well. Yeah. And, and then you kind of... You know, got to do something with her, and the fact that you wrote an episode of Newhart, is that right? Yes, I wrote two episodes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess you were kind of disillusioned in writing. Didn't you say something about the fact that you wrote for movies and wrote for TV, but you got a little disillusioned because a lot of times they would change what you wrote? Yes, that that was very tough for me. I had a, I had to, I actually, I quit writing for TV. I just wouldn't do it anymore because... Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't deal with that. I, I turn in a script and then see them chop it up, and you, you have a good a good setup and a punchline, and and they would take away the setup and leave the punchline, which no longer made any sense. Right. Right. And it, it just I I couldn't deal with it. Right. Yeah. Uh, another so question. Switch- Go ahead. Well, well I was going to say I switched to writing plays at that point, and uh, and uh, didn't have much success with that. Uh, so are you still writing in, in any incarnation? I mean, I would think, especially nowadays, uh, there's so many people that are writing their biographies and their life stories. Have you ever considered doing something like that? No, not a biography, but I still work on an idea for a play or a screenplay now and then. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope I hope that we can see. You know what would be great is if we have a screenplay that's picked up that was written mm-hmm. by you and directed by your wife. That would be fantastic. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> now we we saw again, uh, we saw play again, mm-hmm. Sam again last night, and I had forgotten oh, what a what yeah what a wonderful portrayal. Uh, was there any time in your life when you were growing up? Did anybody before you started doing Bogart? And I believe you did Bogart in a commercial too. Uh, yes. Has anybody ever said to you growing up before that happened? Gee, Jerry, you look like Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> No, the first time it happened was uh, during a play in college. I, uh, I was uh, playing a, a part of a gangster, and um, some lady came backstage one night after the show and said, "Geez, you look so much like Humphrey Bogart." <laughs> and uh, as a, as a gag, I uh, I worked on uh, mimicking his voice and mannerisms. And mm. at closing night of the play, I a little bit of it in just to see what the rest of the cast would react to it and instead the audience screamed <laughs> and I thought I may be on to something here <laughs> yeah well I, I know you did a TV show one time with Rich Little but if I was there I'd have been Rich Jerry's better <laughs> because I'm sorry <laughs> Jerry's definitely no. better than Humphrey Bogart but well, no, I, I never did I, <laughs> I never did a show with, with, with Rich Little all right well, I had a question though, uh, because I, I know that you had done uh, you had done the, the play played against Sam uh, before yep. the movie. 
Um, now, right. Joan Bennett from Dark Shadows had actually worked at, with Humphrey Bogart. Did she ever say anything to you? Did you ever get any feedback from her on what she thought of your uh, portrayal of, of Bogey, or did she ever give you any tips? No, I don't believe we ever talked about it. Oh. Wow. She could have been like, oh, no, 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 Jerry, your hand placement is all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so what was Joan like? Cause I've heard a lot of times that she would kind of keep to herself, that she was friendly, but she got done, kind of walked off. I mean, did you have any kind of a personal relationship with her uh, outside of the show? No. Or? no, not outside of the show, but I did find her just a, a lovely person, mm -hmm. and uh, I really enjoyed working with her. She was um, always nervous, I mean, because we were shooting... Dark Shadows was shot, you know, on what they called live tape back then. There were there were no retakes or stops, mm -hmm. right. which is why there's so many goofs in the show that are still there. I, you know, and I love. Uh, I know Jonathan didn't, but I love the goofs. Yeah. What, what was the the biggest goof you ever made on Dark Shadows, or can you remember? Well, it was probably. I, well, the fly on the nose was one of the <laughs> biggest. <ones. laughs> And and I tried to blow it off, but um, people thought it flew in my mouth. But yeah. It just landed on the end, right smack on the end of my nose, and I went. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> now at the time, uh, Trask was was the biggest foe of Angelique, and and one of the great you know people. If what you want to have menaces? somebody that you love to hate, they're the biggest menace on the show. And then somebody else came in. You had a little competition, but your scenes with him were great. Uh, Humberto Alan Estrado. Yes. I want to find out what it was like working with him, and do you have any things you can tell us of, of interest that was fun that might have happened that wasn't planned or whatever working with Humberto? Um, okay, first of all, Virgil? No, Humberto. Humber he was Nicholas Blair. Nicholas Blair. Yeah, Humbert Alan Estrado. Yes. Yeah, Virgil. Oh, Virgil. Oh. I didn't know his real name. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Humbert Allen Estrado, his real name was. Ah. Oh. No, well, that was the, wasn't that the name he was billed under? No, he was billed I, under, he, maybe later on, but in the be, in the beginning, he was billed under Humbert. Yeah, that's what I say, Humbert, not Virgil. Right. Didn't he, didn't they say Virgil? Well, no, no. Regardless. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what was he like to work with? I mean, was, was he seemed to me like he'd be a real cut-up. Yes, he was great to work with. He he was very professional and uh, and excellent in the part. Just fabulous. I think he was probably my favorite character on the show. Yeah, <laughs> I, I take it you didn't feel any rivalry or competition from him because I know uh, even though they got along well in that, Jonathan Frid later told David Selby that he wasn't real happy that they hired David on the show because he's a little concerned because all the girls love. Jonathan, and he was a little concerned and didn't really like David, but didn't tell him. Were Were you worried that uh, uh, you know Nicholas Blair was going to take away Trask's uh, thunder? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so another question uh, from the audience, uh, Jerry, is uh, mm. they they said uh, a lot of people have talked both good and some very uh, concerning or or unfavorably about Dan Curtis. Uh, I guess from what I understand, some people said that he was a real hard taskmaster. What was your experience with Dan Curtis? Well, again, uh, I didn't have much of a personal relationship with him. It was a working relationship, mm -hmm. and uh, he hired me um, literally without an audition. Um, um, he, uh, I, I met him at his offices, uh, somebody uh, in the show, Nancy Barrett's uh, husband. Um, um, mm -mm. Memories, memories yeah, of he, names he, are. He oh. played uh, Mag. He played Maggie Evans' father. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, he he and I did a play together, and uh, he recommended me to Dan, and so I went uh, into Dan's office, and uh, he said, uh, "Can you start on Monday?" And I said, "Yeah." And that was my audition. Wow. Wow. Well, I've, I've so got to... Go ahead. So I'm I just going to say that I didn't have uh, any uh, any negative uh, problems with Dan at all. Hmm. Um, and I didn't find him particularly uh, difficult in any way. 
Um, he became, you know, he directed some of the shows later on. Yeah. Right. And uh, that was no problem. Well, I think so I don't, I, maybe people who had a more personal relationship with him maybe found him difficult, but I didn't. I think the only one that had a problem with, with Dan Curtis, and it wasn't that he hated him, he, he loved him because we had him on the show. Uh, the actor that played Burke Devlin wound up being fired because of drinking. But uh, other than oh, that, yeah. yeah. And, and he yeah, was, that was me. He was cool with it because I asked him if you were fired by Dan Curtis. He's like, yes, I was. But basically he said he <laughs> didn't blame him and, and he didn't hold anything against yeah. Dan. Right. But I know we've talked to other Dark Shadows actors that said they were afraid of Dan. Well, I don't know why they were afraid. Maybe they were afraid they would get fired. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, you know, Dan, Dan was a big, imposing guy. Yeah, so that's, that's what it is. Maybe that. And... Um, but Mitch, uh, I, I knew Mitch, Mitch uh, before I went on Dark Shadows. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, we used, to, we used to hang out in the same bar in Downey's in New York. And uh, uh, the odd thing was is that uh, he was on early in the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time I was on, it was he was long gone. Yeah. And uh, so I never knew that he was on it until... Um, a few years ago out here in Los Angeles, we were together doing um, a, one of those um, big finish uh, recordings. Right. right. And, and, and I, I said, I didn't know you were on Dark Shadows. And he said, yeah. And then, and then he told me uh, about getting fired, just like he told you. He right. Wow. Told me, no regrets. No, <laughs> wasn't hiding it or even really ashamed of it. He was just, um, it was part of what, who he used to be. Right. All. Right. And all that matters is that he doesn't drink anymore. So, I mean, it's cool to, fine, to yeah. tell people and help yeah. people. But, yeah, he didn't hold anything against Dan Curtis at all. So that that was very cool. You know, you mentioned yes. the big finish, and I, I love these things because you guys get back together and do stuff. Uh, when they approached you, were you hesitant at all, uh, worried that your voice wouldn't sound the same or whatever? And then when you finally got into doing it, what was it like for you doing the uh, Dark Shadows audio dramas? You know, actually, I did have to have them uh, play back some of my original recordings uh, yeah. from Dark Shadows to make sure I could do Trask's voice, mm -hmm. because I had kind of forgotten over the years. Um, but that got me back into it, and then, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun doing those. Yeah, and you can do it in your underwear, <laughs> because nobody sees you. <laughs> it's like doing a radio. <laughs> right. Now, I've got to ask you, because I, I know... Uh, Children on a set, a lot of times, they get intimidated by actors. And I was asking about being intimidated by Dan Curtis. It was Sharon Lentz who played uh, Sarah Collins. That, that was before your time. Uh, said she was afraid of Dan Curtis. But what? No, about, I worked. With, I, what I, about? I worked with a little. Yeah. Oh. What about David Hennessy and Denise Nickerson? Now you worked with them a lot. Yeah. And oh God, right. Denise was so cute. I, I was so sad as she she left us. Because I, I just would have loved to have talked to her. But what was it like working with the kids on Dark Shadows? You had to be you had to be a real asshole to them, Jerry. I mean, you were you, you were right out of Charles Dickens or right out of Oliver Twist to where you know you put me in mind of the Taskmaster at the boarding school and he wouldn't give the kid an extra bowl of porridge or whatever. So what was it like with the kids? Did you have any interactions with with David Hennessy or Denise Nickerson that you can tell us about? <clears throat> no, not really. You know, they were professional, and we just did our scenes and uh, and went on. You know, the, the working um, situation there was was so pressed. I mean, you yeah. you go in at at seven thirty in the morning, and it was just move, 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 move until uh, until you were done. And there was no real time for fooling around or even much uh, chatting or anything. Yeah. I mean. The only time when you really chat it with somebody is if you happen to be in the dressing room, or I mean in the makeup room at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you had a few minutes then, and but usually you spent that time going over your lines. Because right. There were usually only five people on each show, and, and the lines were intense. And in my case, those, those incantations and things I had to memorize were difficult. Right. And uh, so I, I had spent a lot of time just keeping my nose to the grindstone there. Well, I guess it was tough. That's why Joan Bennett had a lot of trouble, because being used to movies, you get multiple takes and dark shadows. It was like you got to go and we keep it in, and, and it's even different being on the stage in a way because you had all that blocking and everything to worry about. And I guess the studio was really small, so very small and very tight. And 
on stage, you had you had a few weeks minimum rehearsal first, and then a number of performances and some previews. On Dark Shadows, you came in in the morning and you did it in yeah. <laughs> a couple of hours. Yeah. Right. Now, I was very happy to see you in Night of Dark Shadows playing Trask, uh, condemning Angelique to be hung by the neck on a tree. But it would have been great if you could have been in House of Dark Shadows, but I guess you couldn't do it because of a previous commitment. Is that right? Yes, I was going to play it again, Sam, I believe. Ah. But um, the uh, they took my part, as you know, and changed it from Trask to Strack. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, and Thayer David played the part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, another question from the audience: uh, Did you? What do you think about the fact that you know over over fifty, over sixty years later, Dark Shadows is still so loved and revered? Did you have any idea at the time that it was going to last for decades and decades afterwards? No, we didn't. But um, we we were, you know, very popular with the with the, the younger viewers. At that time, in fact, you know, outside the studio, you probably heard this. There were there were sometimes fifty, a hundred kids out there waiting for autographs mm -hmm. at the in the afternoon after right. the show was shut. And uh, those uh, kids are now uh, grandparents, and I imagine in some cases even great grandparents. Right. Yeah. And uh, um, I guess you know it's really um, because of their age at the time and the unusual aspect of the show I guess with the vampire it became something that um, uh, I don't know I, I look back fondly on on things like um, you know Frankenstein and the original you know Bela Lugosi and some of those and I guess it's probably the same thing yeah right. you know, so I just I'm, there I was going to ask you, I'm sure your greatest fan is your wife, but being the actress she is, now Newhart had kind of a cult following, but what did she think, what does she think of the whole Dark Shadows thing? I don't know if you've ever taken her to a convention or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, she's come with me a few times, but she keeps a low profile. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know, she, she hasn't seen a, a lot of the shows, so sometimes she doesn't know what all the hullabaloo is about. Right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she said to me just the other day that she's going to have to watch some of them when this came up. <laughs> have to look at some of them and see what this is all about. <laughs> but I think my biggest fan was Gloria Lillibridge, who was who started my fan club uh, uh -huh. just at the time that I was first on Dark Shadows and on uh, and play and doing play it against them on Broadway. Right. And uh, we lost her just a few oh. months ago. Mm. After all these years, she became one of my closest friends and um, and confidants. You know, the the Dark Shadows fans really are all a family. It really, I mean, it feels like that. I'm sure to you, and and they they really are close. And and we mm -hmm. knew all, we knew all the good TV. Okay, I mean, we we and if people try to copy what you guys do. They'll never be another original great show like Dark Shadows. Let me ask you this question: There's a rumor. That Dark Shadows is going to be rebooted, I again. think, again uh, <laughs> on, on the CW. Now, in in lieu of the Johnny Depp disaster, and you said you never watched the Ben Cross. Uh, there's rumor they're going to be asking some of you to come on the show. Would Would you do it? Would you want to do it? Well, I don't know what kind of a show is it going to be. Is it going to be a, a television show? Well, it's going to be a television show, and the plot's supposed to be that there's a young girl. That inherits Collinwood, and she finds <laughs> out her mother was Victoria Winters, and she's supposed well, to find out. Yeah, I get it, but I suppose there will be uh, uh, opportunities for some of us to do a little cameo here and there. But, right. But certainly uh, not playing our. Well, I don't know. I don't see how we could play our old parts. Um, We've all aged a bit along the way. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. I think Reverend Trask in his eighties would be scarier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can still remember lines, so yeah. why not? Can, can can you give us just a bit of Reverend Trask? If you can't remember any line, just say something as Reverend Trask, if you could. And if you can't, I understand, but it, it would be fun. Well, I could try it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. I could say one of the things that Reverend Trask said the most was, Get thee back to hell, evil spirit. <laughs> You just made Terry's whole month. Oh Jerry. my God! You know, I don't know if you're if you ever watched the old Saturday Night Live, but he was before the Church Lady. And <laughs> <laughs> he was a, he was the great emancipator for sure. Now, in knowing that, uh, I think part this is just my opinion, but I think part of the charm of Dark Shadows is is the time at which it was done. You can never recapture that lightning in a bottle and everything you know it was live there was mistakes everything was done practical um how do you feel about the advances in the in the industry that has been made now technologically every you know there's a lot of digital stuff they're, they're even at this point creating digital versions of actors like humphrey bogart instead of having people impersonate them how do you feel about that well, I think it's taking jobs away from actors, and I'm not sure I'm uh, 100% behind that. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I, I just, I don't, I, I've seen some of it actually on commercials. I've seen, you know, I think I saw John Wayne on a commercial that was digitized, and uh, I guess it worked okay, but. Yeah. Mm, well, Not quite the same. You know, things like like play again, Sam. I mean, it, it had to be an actor to have something digital. It just wouldn't have worked. And uh, what did Willie? What did Woody Allen think when he saw you? I guess you probably auditioned for that. Uh, I, I know. Yeah. Wo- See, it's hard, Jerry, because Woody is is a big movie buff, and and he loved Humphrey Bogart. I know you'd love mm-hmm. Humphrey Bogart too, but what did you do to audition for him? And what was his reaction when you did Bogart for him? Well, they were all sitting out there in the dark uh, in the, on a Broadway stage. I was on a Broadway stage. Uh-huh. Uh, the the uh, stage manager just ushered me in, and I couldn't even see who was out there, but there were four or five people. I'm not even sure Woody was there. I, I assume he was. And uh, they asked me to do some lines from the play, which I did. Um, and uh, I was wearing a hat to enhance my... Uh, look like Bogart, and then uh, they asked me to take off the hat. Yeah, and uh, and I heard somebody say, "Jesus, he looks even more like him without the hat." <laughs> you know, I was I was screaming at the TV last night because, like I said, we were watching play it again, Sam. And in the first part of the movie, they kind of kept you in shadow, and I kept yelling at the TV, "Put some damn light on his face! He looks like Humphrey <laughs> Bogart." Okay, and then finally they showed your face, but but but. You know, they had the whole package there, but they had you. Did you ever meet Lauren Bacall? No, I never did. Yeah, because, you know, being Humphrey's uh, I, I wife. Heard that, yeah, I know that she didn't like it. Oh, didn't really? Like okay. Yeah. Well, I, but it is true that you, you are a Humphrey Bogart fan, right? Oh, yeah. In yeah. fact, I'm, I was watching one today, a, a, a rewatch <laughs> of Conflict. Yeah. With Gloria Graham. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Now you. Well, I was yeah. telling I was telling Terry uh, last night. I'm Terry's daughter, yeah. and I grew up. He. I'm a Dark Shadows fan because of him. He's. We've watched the whole original series uh, together. But I was telling him I was like because I always noticed even before I saw Play It Again Sam that you looked like Humphrey Bogart. But I was telling Terry now I think that in later years now I think you look like uh, Christopher Lee did in his later years. So I really want somebody to do a biography of, of Sir Christopher Lee and have you play him. Have you ever heard? Have, has anybody ever told you that they thought you looked like Sir Christopher Lee? Now that you have the beard and stuff, you look like Christopher Lee. Yeah. No, nobody ever told me that. Yeah. Although I, I would like to play some of the parts he's played. And <laughs> well, I have to. I have to talk to my friend because you did a movie for my friend Don Glute, and you did Tales of Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Right. He's a real good buddy of mine, and I'll have to talk him into doing this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I do have one. I'm going to shoot another um, film with uh, Ansel, Ansel Farage wow. um, in, in the beginning of next year. Um, playing, a, I'm going to be playing a uh, uh, an elderly biker. Oh, a biker? <laughs> like what? A motorcycle yeah. guy? Really? Yeah, yeah, from a gang, right? Jesus, that's a stretch. 
That's what I thought, too. But Ansel <laughs> is uh, convinced that I'm the right guy for the part. Oh, he, so, he, knows, but, he knows you walk on a treadmill. I mean, are you going to actually ride the motorcycle? No. No. Good, because I don't <laughs> want nothing to happen to you. Holy shit. Wow. Well, I must say, you're you're the most uh, down-to-earth guy. I, my favorite story about you is, uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but I actually interviewed you before on camera at the Dark Shadows Festival in Burbank. And uh, we, we had to set up, we were doing a live video remote uh, on the Internet. And it was video, and I interviewed you with the microphone and everything. I had the others there. But... I was set up in a table, too, and I was next to Marie Wallace, and you came in, and I was very last. You came in a little late or something, and you set up your table, but you had to go way down in the corner. Like, nobody could, could see you, and I was like, hey, Jerry, let me change spots with you. You move up here. You need to be with the rest of the cast. You're like, I'm fine. It's all right. <laughs> you, you, you didn't have an ego trip at all. You didn't care. It's like, I'm over here in the corner. That's fine. You don't have to move for me. <laughs> And, and I was I was very impressed. I was very impressed. <laughs> yeah, well, and I I, I didn't mind. You know, I, I, I I'm I'm kind of shy, so being you know in the midst of a crowd doesn't always right. uh, isn't always the best place for me. Well, I I post those pictures a lot, and all the women's talking about how good looking you are. I wished I looked like you. I tell you, <laughs> I really do. I mean, seriously. Now, playing Reverend Trask, did you get? All the women like mooning over you, like Jonathan Fred and David Selby did. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I did have one one lady tell me at one of the autograph conventions. She said, "Thank you for showing religion up for what it really is." Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good question. I mean, I asked you about your background and stuff. Did you have a religious background? I mean, what do you think about organized religion and these TV evangelists? I guess if it would have been modern day, oh, I know he was there in the 60s and stuff, but like today, I think Trask would be on TV. You know, he would have like the Christian Broadcasting Network or something. I mean, what do you, what do you think about I that? I he, <laughs> he, he would be in there, that's for sure. <laughs> so, so what, what do you think about organized religion? Well, I, I was uh, raised Catholic uh, as a kid, and uh, I I dropped out of it when I was uh, probably about 18 or so, and yeah. it didn't make sense to me anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I've uh, stayed away from it ever since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love the photo. I guess it was on Love of Life that Sammy Davis Jr. was a guest, and you got to take a photo with Sammy Davis Jr., the two coolest guys ever together, Sammy Davis Jr. and... and uh, yeah. The great, you know, Jerry Lacey, who played Reverend Trask. I mean, what, was he cool to meet? Oh, yeah. He was, um, uh, in the story, he was, uh, he came into the club that my character, Rick, owned. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, did Candyman for us. Mm. Uh, he was a big fan of Love of Life. And uh, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, somebody ran into him and it all came together anyway. Wow. And the producers had him in. Well, you know, I've got the perfect answer for you, Jerry. If anybody ever says something bad about Dark Shadows, and they say, oh, that was so cheesy, and that was so cheap, and that was so corny, then you can remind them you did a movie called Super Shark <laughs> with John Snyder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think that probably you probably wouldn't say that was the highlight of your career, would you, or would you? No. no. <laughs> it was not. It was not. <clears throat> but... Um, I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed working on it. Um, uh, Fred Olin Ray, the director, uh, used me in a, a couple of other of his films, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing as bad as that flying shark. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Don Glutes, my friend, my other friend is Fred Olin Ray, and you not only did that movie for him, but you did a short called Spidora as well, which is like a carnival. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I got to see that yet. I haven't seen it, but yeah. but that had to be fun. Yeah. That's that's a pretty good short. I think you'll like that. You see, that's, that's a good, good. thing for, for for actors like you is, is you get people that are like me, and I'm doing a radio, or I'd be doing this with you too. If if I was into film, I'd be cast. You people like Don Glute and Fred Olin Ray, they're monster kids. They grew up loving this stuff, and they get to cast their idols in the movies like you. You know, and and that's uh -huh. a big thing for them. Uh, so kind of along those lines, another question that just came in from, from the audience uh, is they wanted to find out, because you've done 
literally like every kind of genre that there is. I mean, yes, of course, you're known for like the horror stuff and the monster stuff because of Dark Shadows and things like that. But you've done comedy, you've done soap operas, you know. They're wanting to know uh, what is your favorite genre to work in and do you ever feel like you're typecast? Well, yes, I, I felt I was terribly typecast in the middle of my career because of the Humphrey Bogart thing. Mm. Uh, after the after the movie came out, there was a time when I couldn't uh, get an audition for anything without them asking me to do it like Humphrey Bogart, just right, as yeah. a gag for right. them uh, sitting in the in the uh, you know the director seat or whatever they were casting director, but. Uh, once they said that to me, I knew that I wasn't going to get the part because yeah. they were just looking at me as this, as this um, Humphrey Bogart impersonator. Which right. you know, I I tried to to do a good job with that. I tried to bring out more than just his tough guy persona, but his gentleness. I tried to put all that into that character when I did it. And um, it, uh, it really bothered me later on when I started getting asked to do it, whether it was a comedy or a drama or whatever it was. And occasionally I would get cast in a part that I wasn't really right for because it was a Humphrey Bogart type part. Mm -hmm. And it recalled, called for a, a, a big, tough guy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, Bogart wasn't uh, any taller than I am. In fact, I think I might be a little bit taller than he was. But I much uh, have a much more slender build, right? And uh, so there were a lot of parts that uh, I would even got cast in sometimes that I was totally wrong for, and many, many more that I was asked to audition for that I was totally yeah. wrong for and or did not get. Well, you did some comedy <laughs> things like like variety shows, and it was always fun to do comedy because I, you know, yes. I, yeah, I could imagine. Yeah, I love doing comedy. Uh, probably better but you know you can't really just do uh, well, at least not for me I couldn't do one thing I like going back and forth from a drama to yeah. to comedy uh, switching back and forth as much as I could um, but you know at 85 uh, the parts are few and far between Right. Like, like I said, Reverend Trask in his 80s. you got to go for it. I think, I think it would, it, it right. would be great. Right. Now, people wouldn't let me get off of here as, as we start to come to an end without asking you about working with, with Jonathan Frid and uh, Laura Parker because you, you were at odds with them many, many times. And I heard that, that Jonathan was a real fun guy. And, of course, Laura, we know her pretty good. She's, she's a sweetheart. Just had a birthday. Yes. Just had a birthday. Happy birthday to yes. Laura Parker. I, I think I know, she's I the same it. age you are. You say, wait, what was you said? You sent her what? I said I just sent her a note about that today. Oh, oh that's yeah. very nice. But what were they like working with? I mean, because you had to be, uh, you know, kind of at odds with them. I know I've been around method actors that a lot of times they deliberately distance themselves or they're, they're mean off camera to them because they feel it helps them do that. Was that you? Did you do that? or? No, not at all. I was, you know, I was kind of um, busy all the time. Yeah. I, I didn't. You know, I didn't um, associate with uh, them outside of the studio. So, and the work, you know, was as I mentioned before, so so intense that you didn't have time to really socialize while you were there. Yeah. And uh, so, I didn't really get to know Lara until uh, we started doing the big finish right. things and the and the conventions. Yeah, that's, that's what I they say. They, they a lot of them say that they don't really talk to them because they didn't have time until like a fan revival thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now you did get a yeah. chance to, you were kind of reunited uh, with Laura and Catherine Lee Scott when you guys did Dr. Maboose, right? Is it Maboose? Yes. Maboose? So, I mean... Maboose. Maboose. What was I, it? I say Maboose. Okay. What was it like, what was it like kind of being back on set in a working environment with them? I mean, this was, you know, decades later. Yeah, well, actually, I don't think we had a scene together. Uh, I did. I did have one with uh, Catherine, I believe, in the in the second one, the second Doctor Mabuse, but um, not in the first one. They were they were um, three women who were. It, it was never really 
really clear to me who they were. <laughs> I, I, I just asked Ansel about that recently, and uh, he explained it, but I still don't really get it. <laughs> sort of like muses or something. Mm-hmm. They were. Some of the writers didn't get it either. There was some bad continuity on Dark Shadows. And I, heard, I heard sometimes the writers would go out and talk to the fans that were hanging outside the studio because they forgot. <laughs> what happened in the fans had to fill them in. Right. And it, that, that's crazy. Just I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to mention, too, I am so jealous of you getting to make out with Nancy Barrett because, I mean, <laughs> wow. And it was just her birthday, too, I guess. And, and good job. <laughs> that's all I can say. Wow. Well, it, it's, it. it's been great talking to you, Jerry, having you on as, as a Halloween guest. Uh, can I impose on you one more time because you already did Reverend Trask? If I could get you to do a station ID, now just basically say something along the line of our station being evil and playing the music of the devil. Uh, that would be fun. Just say, you know, you, you can either say you're Jerry Lacey, you can say you're Reverend Trask, and kind of do a, a Trask for us and say you're listening to Crag Radio. Crag, C R A G G, Crag Radio. Can you do something like that? I think so. All right, anytime. This is Reverend Trask speaking. Be sure to tune in again next Saturday for more news of the devil on Craig Radio. Oh, my God. One take. And that was so perfect. That that was the greatest gift, Jerry, you could have ever given to me. I am so much in debt to you. You are seriously on my top five of the actors of Dark Shadows. You are incredible. Roy Thinnis did a terrible job playing Trask. <laughs> <laughs> there was nobody but you. And uh, don't worry about being in your 80s. You need to do Trask again. I mean, not just in the okay. audio dramas, but like on camera. Yes. Yes. All right. And, and and love to your wife. Yes. Love to your wife. Thank you so much for spending some time with us uh, on the Saturday, Jerry. And I will keep in touch with you. And uh, we'd love to have you back on any time. Okay, I'm here. All right. Have a great rest of your weekend and a happy Halloween tomorrow. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.